Hey everybody, I'm back. Been a little while since my last video. Had other things going on and whatnot, and just haven't had time or felt like filming anything. But I got a little treat for you. I ordered a new bar that we are going to unbox and check out. So. We'll get right to that. All right, here we are. I'm gonna see how this works. Oh, knocking things over. See how this works out trying to unbox this on camera where you can see what's going on. So I, after watching one of the Iron Horse's latest videos ordered a new saw bar. Get this open here. All right, here we go. As you can see, I ordered a Samara. This is supposed to be a 28 inch premium light. 50 gauge, 3 8 pitch. So, here we go. Get this bad boy out. There we go. There you can see it. Oh, I can't get that angle, but yeah, 28 inch, 50 gauge. It's not too bad. Has a replaceable sprocket nose on it. Although I will say that the uh, The rivets do sit up rather proud of the bar surface, the three holding rivets. So we'll see, we'll see how that holds up. But it's feels fairly stiff, obviously light. It's a, uh, yeah. So, let's see if we can get the old scale working here. Adjust this a little bit. Uh, let's see, is that the one that I want? There we go. Okay, that's grams. Pounds and ounces. Okay. Okay. That there is saying two pounds, ten point six ounces. Two pounds, ten point six. So that's <laughs> I feel real light. Holy moly. Okay. For a comparison, I have a Husqvarna twenty eight inch. 3 8 50 gauge bar. This one is a 93 driver instead of a 92. I don't know why Samara has that 
difference, but they do. So let's see here. Okay. That is three pounds, 13 ounces even. So that Samara bar is a pound, over a pound lighter than a standard 28 inch bar. Another comparison, I have an Echo 24 inch bar right there. This is an 81 driver 24 inch bar, 3 8 50 gauge. Three pounds, two point one ounces. Yep. So that twenty eight inch bar is lighter than a twenty four inch bar. And just for fun, this is some no name that I can tell 16 inch bar. There we go. 3 8 drive. This is a junk bar, obviously, you can tell that. But I pulled off of an old saw. That's two pounds, 0.6 ounce. And that Samara was two pounds, 10.6, I think is what I said. So this 28 inch bar is only 10 ounces heavier than a 16 inch bar. Okay, hold on a minute here. All right, so yeah, you just seen that. Got the Sumera bar and yes, I know things are backwards cause the selfie camera is easier to use for this. One thing I noticed on the Iron Horses video is he said that the Euler hole was rather small on these, but this hole is larger than what you will get on a stock Oregon or Husqvarna chainsaw bar. And on those, I've opened them up. Not a lot, but I have opened them up a little bit to allow more oil. So, We'll see, for right now, I think this oiler hole will work. If not, I can open it up. But yeah. And for reference, this bar is listed as two pounds, 12.6 ounces on the website, I believe or two pounds 12, real right in close there. Near as I can tell off of what I've been able to find, a still lightweight bar 
which those are generally considered the lightest bar on the market right now. A 28 inch is two pounds, 11 ounces. So this bar, this particular bar weighs in lighter than that. And their advertised weight is only one ounce more than that. So you tell me, I paid $165 for this bar, which is a lot of money for a, a bar, but when you look at a still lightweight bar at $250 or so, that, uh, that makes this look rather appealing, at least in my mind. Time will tell if this bar holds up or not, but... In the hand, it feels pretty good. The uh, the cutouts are not bad. Okay, I was just checking there. I thought in Harvey's video that it looked like the cutouts were transparent or somewhat transparent, but. They're not, at least not on this one. I can't see it. But definitely, definitely light. This is going to be different to get used to, uh, that is for sure. Oh, and this is a Husqvarna mount. With all of my saws taken a Husqvarna mount. I don't see point in buying a still mount since I do not own any stills that take a bar that large. Let's see, in other news, put a different top end on my 2071 Johnsrid. I wasn't happy with the highway big bore kit. It just didn't time out that good. I think it had way too much intake timing. And my porting probably was not ideal. I didn't think that I got that aggressive with the exhaust or anything, but I just didn't feel that that saw was performing the way that it should be, especially when my 66cc 680 Echo was pulling harder than that 75cc big bore kit. So I took the big bore kit off, I put my the stock 50 millimeter cylinder and piston on. The only thing I did to it was base gasket delete, squish is around 35 thousandths, which some will say is loose, some will say it's just right. It feels okay, has a good compression. I put a new caber ring on the piston, and then I had bought... A cheap eBay muffler and then I just done a large single pipe outlet that one is a one inch electrical conduit is what I used for that sounds good uh, flows real good I can stand out four or five feet away from the saw and still feel that air thumping, so it's not too much. You know, it's still giving good enough back pressure. So I'm going to see how that runs this weekend. And then the 670 Johnsrid that I've been messing with off and on. I took the muffler off that I had modded. 
This one, again, this is just a $18 Amazon muffler that I done a dual pipe, but I done it with half inch conduit. And it sounded good, it wasn't obnoxiously loud, but flowed more than what this pipe, this muffler would stock. But it just didn't feel like it was enough for that saw. And that saw uh, is nothing crazy. I opened up the lower transfers on it, base gasket delete, and I cut a little bit of intake timing into the piston skirt. Not much. So I bought another muffler and double piped it with three quarter inch electrical conduit. And it it feels a lot snappier. I think that half inch conduit, while it was an improvement over a stock form muffler, just wasn't flowing enough. So we'll see how it also performs this weekend. Um, on the John Srid, the 670, and my 680 Echo, I've been running uh, some of the Hypa chain, full skip, chisel tooth. It seemed to cut okay out of the box, but once you filed it, it, it really cuts good, which is typical, you know. Stock chain out of the box cuts okay, but it needs to be filed for it to cut really good. We'll see how it holds up. I think it's maybe a little bit soft, but I got those chains really cheap. I think somehow I found those chains on a deal for like 12 or $13 a loop, so I, I couldn't pass that up. For this Sumara bar, I bought a loop of 810, yes I know it's backwards, 810, 28 inch, full skip, chisel chain. We'll see how it does. Uh, the Archer chain that I bought last winter, the semi chisel, this stuff. I just, I've filed it, filed the rakers, got it to where it felt like it was just razor sharp. I just do not like the way semi chisel chain cuts. Sharp semi chisel chain cuts the same as dull full chisel chain. That's that's my finding on it. I know the milling guys really like it. Supposedly gives a better quality cut for milling, but for what I'm doing with it, it's not good. It just adds too much time, you know, it you're having to work the bar, you know, put pressure on the bar for it to cut good and you know, I'm not cutting actual hardwood, but dry lodge pole gets very hard. You know. So yeah, I'm not going to be using that anymore. I'll figure out what to do with the rest of that short roll that I bought. And sometime in the future, I'll buy a roll of chisel chain. But... I think that's about it for now. Until the next time, thank you for watching. To everybody that has subscribed, I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.